Welcome to PartialArc.com. <laughs> Don't do that. Do you want to hear a story? I'm not letting go. Are you ready for this? Follow your heart. I'm going in. This. This is. This is. Blockbuster Smash Up. Welcome to the last episode of Blockbuster Smash Up. Guys, it's been an amazing year, and thank you for joining us each episode as we take one globally accepted good film and one globally accepted bad film and smash them together for all of you. We had a great time doing it, and we couldn't have asked for better guests. We've had an amazing time doing the show, and I hope you've had an amazing time listening to it. I'm Jay Jones, your host, joined by Todd G. Levin, our co-host, and our special guest. So, thank you everyone for listening, and now join us for our final episode... So let's dive in. Is everybody ready? Mm. Ready to yes. do this thing? Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Butts. All right, we're here with our guest, Todd. Who do we have for this episode? <laughs> uh, sorry, you said butts right before we went. So I, <laughs> I can't right not laugh. I didn't even know he was going to go that Super quick. Anyway, so, so butts over here is Truman Alfaro. <laughs> Hi, everybody, but <laughs> Your nickname's going to be butts for the entire oh, podcast. Butts Alfaro. If you, know, you want to know how to, how to make me laugh, just say butts just before say anything. Butts. Uh, and Hillary Levi. Hey. Hillary, how are you doing? I'm good. How are y'all? Are you excited about the uh, the Atlanta Olympics? <laughs> yeah, I Hillary's am. wearing an Atlanta '96 Olympics. <laughs> okay, hat y'all. <laughs> that apparently she got from a dude at a bar. Okay, yeah, no. So here's the brief funny story: is that I was watching. So I'm from Atlanta, Hotland. and we don't call it that. But um, <laughs> 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 the brief story of the, how I got the hat was I was at a bar in Hollywood. During the finals for the World Cup, it was the last game, and I pooled everyone's money in our group, and I paid a young gentleman $40 for this hat because I wanted it, because I wanted an original 96 Olympics hat. The man was me! I was the gentleman in the bar. (laughs) I gave you the hat! Look inside the inside of the rim. You know it to be true. Search your feelings. (laughs) A guy at a bar has no name. <laughs> oh, boy. Actually, he didn't because I didn't know it. Well, so now you're wearing you his hat. And now I'm wearing his hat. I washed it. Make sure. I- Kids, let me tell you the story about when a young woman paid me $40 for a hat. <laughs> Guys, we always start our episode with a personal question, sometimes yeah. about hats. Todd, yes. for this episode, what is our personal question? Uh, what's your favorite Pixar? <gasps> Go. Oh. Right? It's hard. So much sighing going on right now. If you want, I have a favorite and then one I consider the best. So if you want to have two, you can. Because my favorite will always be Monsters, Inc. You cannot take that movie away from me. It's the best thing ever, and I love it. Yeah, we're going to have to look it up. But the best, to me, I think the best they've ever done is WALL-E. And Ah. and I can't, it's like I can't say that it's my favorite because Monsters, Inc., but it is the one that, like, my jaw is on the floor for most of it because I'm just amazed at, like, what Pixar can do. And because it's going to be the future? Oh. And because it's, like, oddly correct, it seems like, you know, to the point of where, you know, Fred Willard is definitely going to be, like, the uh, the captain. Amazing. And- Good for Fred. <laughs> Good for he's gonna Fred. He's going to make it for quite a while. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm having to make a really tough call here. All right, Hillary, what is it? I I'm it. I just... You have to pick something, right? Um, yeah, it is Leopard. I think my fr- my favorite is going to have to be very just OG first Toy Story, their first <gasps> film. It's a good, it's a it's solid a choice. It's a classic. Yeah. It changed the game. Uh-huh. Like, and it was just, I remember watching like all the like featurettes that came out on like the Disney Channel like before they came out. And like, it's the first like fully animated film. And it was like two of these actors that like my whole family loved. And it was right. amazing. And it had such a great message. And it was so smart and brilliant, even as a kid. I mean, Tim Allen and Tom Hanks. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> you are a toy. <laughs> like it's it's just there's it I don't think anything can beat it for me in terms of favorites even though I I love Wally it's so like it's brilliant yeah I, I really do think Lobo Wally Pete. would Bye. be the best they've ever done except for the fact that I, I, I I'm going to pick Inside Out mm. because I think it has I'm a message you. that is so needed and it's very important so needed it's an incredibly it's a science positive incredibly important 
it's an emotion positive an emotion mode positive, and yeah. it's a mental health positive movie which for someone like me who struggled with that kind of stuff as a kid and even now to see a movie targeted at children and families how to talk to your kids about mental health and mental illness yeah, and man. i think well and i think they what it, it really really defined what depression is for people that don't understand it because depression is not sadness and that's like i think what it frames it as versus like oh she's sad she's depressed it's sadness taking over and, and it's she's, like no it, yeah yeah. Sadness is okay. It's when you lose who you are mm-hmm. that's depression. Yeah, and th- and leaning into that sadness is okay, and that's how you move through it. And I just was like, this is what I've been trying to tell people. It's it's Rough. really good, really good yeah. pick by the way. And also, I think good Up pick. would definitely be on Ooh. that. Li- like top three, those are oh, the top yeah. three. Oh yeah, Truman. What are your favorite Pixar? What is your favorite Pixar film, and what do you think is their best Pixar film? Um, I'm picking from a top three of I love Ratatouille. Yeah, Ooh. great. Um, I, I also, always like. There's always whenever you have the Pixar conversation, someone will always say one, and I'm like, oh, that's right, that movie does exist, and it's so good. Like, yeah, Patton Oswalt, man. I, yeah, he's just great. He's got that perfect voice for you. Yeah, it really is perfect. Like I, I, I identify with him. I'm like, oh my god, he's an everyman, but he's smarter than an everyman, and yes. he's so much better. And it's just a, a really fun, stylish movie. I, it's just a, it's just a good time. To I love it. It's a great pick. It's, it is. It's really in my like top four, five. Uh, you know, definitely yeah. Ratatouille is like way up there. It's a great it movie. Is. I, I might go home and watch it tonight. Now, now what would be your number two? Uh, that's not even my favorite one. That's just oh, okay. top three. My, my oh, uh-huh. leading up to the number one. Uh, uh, my number one. I'm gonna <gasps> skip number two because I forgot it. Uh, number one, I'm going with Wally. I love Wally. Wow. The, Solid choice. The great first, pick. the first 45 minutes of that movie, there's yep. no dialogue, yep. and it's great. And it's it's a cost. Every time I go to Costco, like I just got a Costco card, like oh, a month ago. Oh, congrats! And I, I, I buy Wally every time I go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I go in and I'm like, oh, so this is what he's talking about. Yeah. Like I walk in and I could live in that place legitimately for the rest of my life. And if I, the most adorable robot ever. Oh yeah. And so, now that we have hoverboards, I mean, I know it's the world is coming. By and large, it's, we're almost there. Well, guys, those are our personal questions. Thank you for sharing yes. your feedback about Pixar. Thank you. So, we are now about to do our smash up where we take two films: one globally accepted good film Yay! and one globally accepted bad film. Ooh. And smash them together to Yay! create an entirely new film. So before we go to our little producer session to put this film together, we are yes. going to announce the films and give a little insight to the audience of what it's about if you've never heard of it mm. or seen it. Yes. Mm. So Todd, are you ready? I am. On are the you? count of three. Oh, I am. <laughs> One. Vans. Two. two a three. three. After Inside Earth. Earth. After Earth mm. and Inside Out, pre-chosen, yes! pre-chosen by pre-chosen. the way, pre-chosen. When you were like talking about it, I was, we were just like, mm-hmm, "It's yep. really good." Inside Out's pretty good. <laughs> it's a, it's a and good now movie. we'll have to ruin it. So, <laughs> Todd, would you like to explain Inside Out for anyone who hasn't seen it, I and would. for anyone that we didn't spoil it for already? Inside Sorry. Out is uh, adorable, an adorable little tale of a family uh, from Minnesota uh, moving to. Minnesota. Uh, San Francisco and it follows the story of Riley Anderson I think uh, she's an 11 year old girl who loves hockey and she's like really cool and basically uh, she's going through some emotional changes where on externally she's going through this you know journey uh, of you know having a new school and and leaving her friends behind and all the things she likes to do internally there is an emotional battle between all of her personified emotions that are uh sort of having trouble living together. It's almost a workplace comedy in her head yeah. uh, of, of all the, you know, so there's joy, fear, sadness, disgust, and anger who are uh, at constant odds inside of her head. And once a, uh, a pivotal memory, a core memory gets like lost inside the memory storage bank, uh, joy and sadness uh, go to retrieve it and get lost in the, you know, sort of like the the depths of the brain and the imagination, uh, and have to fight their way back, uh, so that Riley. It, meanwhile, Riley is going through like wild emotional swings and and like you know figuring out who she is as a person and all these like great things. Uh, and uh, and will they make it? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Check out that movie. <laughs> yeah, but very good movie. 
And it's amazing. It has a girl playing hockey, and that's fucking awesome. And an imaginary friend named Bing Bong. And Bing Bong. Let's Bing not Bong. forget Bing Bong. He's great. Bing Bong's like the greatest character ever. So good. He's going to be fine. Bong Bong. All right. Um, <laughs> Awful. <laughs> so for my film, After Earth, oh. uh, is the Will Smith did and Jaden Smith see vehicle. Did anyone even see Pe- it? People did. Oh, the people at Overbrook. Yeah. Some people did. Uh, it's the M. Night Shyamalan film. We've done a couple of M. Night Shyamalan films, <laughs> unfortunately for him. Wait, that was an M. Night movie? Oh, yes, yeah. oh, it was. Yeah. It was supposed to be like a sort of a comeback. comeback yeah. It's like, I got this, uh, guys. I got Will Smith. And I mean, it is a great logline. And Will Smith Jr. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's about... Uh, Katai. <laughs> <laughs> the lead character is named Katai Rage. No, and no, like, no. Katai. See, none of us have actually seen this movie because it was the one that everyone yep. shat on that year. Jaden the industry Smith. just decided to shit on this movie. Yep, so Jaden no Smith's name in the movie is Katai Rage, Rage. and okay. Will Smith's name is Cipher Rage. No, yes, shoot me. It's already bad. <laughs> Cipher and Katai couldn't be two. Just read the cast list. Be better than in the pod. Well, Katai is actually a family name. It's sure, 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 sure. Naturally. <laughs> but Rage. Uh, so <laughs> this is a story of a father and son just trying to reconnect. See, Cypher Rage, played by Will Smith, is like this uh, fearless general in the far future. All humanity has left Earth a millennia ago, and they're like on different planets and fighting really terrifying monsters. And these terrifying monsters that hate humans, they... Can they like they hunt down and like they sense your fear and they'll kill you really fast and the only way to beat them is to have no fear and Will Smith is the only one who's mastered what it's called ghosting to get close enough to them to have no fear and kill them so like basically no emotion so Will Smith okay very char- cool though. very charismatic actor is meant to it plays his role like a brick the entire movie oh. with like, that accent that weird yeah yeah it's a ver- they try like, to create a new accent. future accent ah, which uh ain't that the true true ain't that the true true <laughs> it does not work <laughs> work that's the true true so anyways i love it so will smith the most charismatic hollywood actor ever is forced to play a dull brick character the entire movie which is not someone you want will smith to play Yeah, good point point. and uh in the movie it starts off there. They're leaving this planet. Jaden Smith, who is, again, Katai Rage, Katai Rage. Uh, you know, wants to bond with his father because his father has no emotion. It's like, Dad, I want to be like you. I want to be a warrior. And <laughs> they're on a ship like traveling through space. You have to not want anything. And something goes wrong. Oh, no. And their Vulcan. ship crash lands on <gasps> the most dangerous planet ever. Dun, dun, dun. What planet? Uh, what planet? Earth. Oh, no. That's right. It's been a millennia, and apparently all the animals fucking hate us now, and like are just giant and monstrous and gross and terrifying. And Will Smith, they, they crash landed. Their ships have broken apart, and like the son has to make his way back to his father, and his father's like his legs broken, and he has to like talk him through getting there. Oh, the God. problem with this setup is Jaden Smith. <laughs> Period. Whatever you want to say about him, not the strongest actor. Uh-huh. So when Jaden Smith. When we're following just Jaden Smith, he has to carry the movie, right? And he's not acting against any real thing right. in any scene. It's just him on what I can only imagine is a green CGI set. Like, ooh, not the best acting moments for any actor. And then you really. cut from him back to just his dad, who's yeah, apparently who's also now talking into space. Like he's talking to nobody. Will Smith oh is God. acting cheap, like cheap, acting like a table. He has no emotion. Make. <laughs> yeah. pretty cheap yeah and just sitting in a ship being like you remember son like don't do fear and like the son's like okay dad but i'm afraid and like that for like two hours uh and really bad cgi animals that would make the jungle book cry uh guys i just looked up like i was like who wrote this do you know who's credited as a writer on this besides M. Night i'm Shyamalan? excited who gary witta don't know yup who that is now for the audience that doesn't know can we give another uh, credit for Gary? Uh, I mean, he wrote a uh, book of Eli, but uh, the comic. But he's like a well-known like writer mm-hmm. and like screenwriter and uh, comics and worked on some games. Look, and- I mean, like in theory, like the cool one I mentioned earlier, like the ghosting and like the terrifying aliens. Yeah. It all sounds fun, but that's like not in- the movie. Right? That's not yeah. the movie at all. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice yeah. setup. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm that should sure just be the movie. He right? did. I'm sure what happened was he did a draft of that M Night was like, okay, but like I'm gonna do my pass, and like J.D. Smith is, is gonna be the lead. But yeah. the twist is. None of that happens, and this is what happens. I'm gonna keep this cool concept, and then <laughs> put him on Earth and act against a giant eagle and befriend an eagle and live in an eagle's nest. Oh, what? A giant okay. eagle at one point. All right. 
What? I'm sorry, Jay. It's this is I'm I'm it's not a I'm very, starting to sense uh, that it was not, actually hard for you to It's not a very good it. movie, guys. Oh, no. <laughs> so but anyways, that's after Earth. So now, Todd. Yes. Now everybody, time to enter the producer session and start the smash up. Smash, 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 smash. All right, everybody, we're here in our studio session today. Now look. I wouldn't normally interrupt your Pokemon Go sessions. I know it means a lot. Hmm? I, look, oh, put, sorry. You gotta put the sorry. phones away. Oh, right. And I know we've got... Look, this studio is infested with those motherfuckers. <laughs> but we've got to focus up right now. I just want to catch them all. I just need my damn I know, Jigglypuff. I know. But we've got some time here. we got to bang out a $1 billion movie. And damn it, we're going to do it. So do we have any guidelines? Or well, is this just we're going to just throw shit at the wall? Uh, well, well, well. with the kids. We still now, I know we threw out our entire development department. I mean, we're the development department now. But uh, <laughs> Bonuses I mean, all around. Who needs yes. them, you know? I mean, really, you don't need <laughs> them. I have, mean, I'm head of social media, so I totally know what people agreed. like. When you agreed. have advertising, who needs development? That's very true. <laughs> the marketing department is basically development. Now... I have spoken with marketing. Oh, and the word has come down. <laughs> so we have okay. We're so not just gonna. With you. We're not just gonna throw shit at the wall this time. I mean, we did it last week, but okay. I think we changed things up. Right. All right. Also, I know we got to get back to Pokemon Go, so I want a little less thinking. So good point. They told us these days the kids are really into mm-hmm. something like Inside Out <gasps> meets After Earth. Yes. Ooh, yeah. It feels like it. the proper mix. I right? see it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, now I brought you all here because you're top of your game. So what are we looking at? What are people thinking when you think, when you think, I mean, so close these two movies. Right. Inside Out and After Earth. We've got the the story of a, of a girl coming of age mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. things going on inside of her brain. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And then, you know, mixed with the coming of age of someone that is uh, floating in air while an entire planet is trying to kill them. I mean, that's I mean, yeah. it's very similar. I Identical, mean, really. There's definitely this... Th- I like the thing about ghosting and how you're supposed to control your fear and emotions. Mm. So Ooh. I feel Ooh, like, you know, fear is her main emotion and they're all kind of fighting to take over control and maybe mm. you throw in sort of like this other emotion that's her ghosting emotion. Oh, awesome. Okay. Interesting. So almost like to become this trained warrior, she has to like go into her mind mm-hmm. and train within her mind. Mm-hmm. But but there's a dark part of her mind. Because she hasn't been to her mind in a millennium. In a millennium. <laughs> we're dealing with a mortal? Yeah. I guess. But she also has to maybe deal you, with the relationship between her and her mother. Maybe we're dealing with Ooh. reincarnated peoples and so her brain actually goes back for millennia. <laughs> I'm sure we could cover all of that in a, in a simple title card at the top of, of the movie. Of course. Yeah. It's been a millennia since, since the last time I went in my, my brain. For the Anderson family. Dear diary, <laughs> one millennia ago. <laughs> I just woke from a cryogenic slumber. I can remember all my past lives. But no, and sh- and it's been so long since she's went inside certain parts of her brain that uh, they've started to attack her oh, they've gotten dangerous yeah so it's almost like inceptioning into her own mind Ooh. but like a horror movie but like a horror movie but what about but like, with kids and maybe like her and nightmares are like the animals and she has to fight them inside. there you Ooh. go her stuffed animals maybe that's what she has nightmares about is stuffed animals coming alive yeah and she has to go in her she has to go in her brain and fight these monsters slash animals yes. that have taken over yes. Ooh, you know what I have seen terrifying CGI monsters but you know what I haven't seen Terrifying stuffed animal monsters, right? Ooh, CGI, mm. terrible CGI stuffed. Ooh, animal yeah, 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 definitely CGI. I don't want to make any. We don't no make anything. No animatronics. Why Please, would, who are we? It's Spielberg? just too expensive. Yeah, it's too expensive. Yeah, it's we'll much, do it. We'll do it on post. It's much better to have like a team of people working around the clock with, uh, you know. Computers. Post is real cheap. I mean, you can lock and those people in a building and just. Make I know, them and work. you don't have to pay them. You don't have anything. to pay them. Anything. And listen, we don't have to. You know, we can kind of outsource it. Doesn't have to really be here at the studio. That's true. I mean, that's yeah. true. Doesn't have to be here in America. So we're so we're going into a girl's mind, and her antagonists are going to be stuffed animals. So what's the story here? Who's who's our lead protagonist? What is her name, and what's the situation? Why is she going into her mind to fight stuffed animal CGI monsters? Symphony Rage. Ooh, I love it. Symphony, Symphony Rage. Rage. <laughs> I don't know why I always am the one who comes up with the name. Symphony, Symphony Rage is Dot maybe com. my favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you hate orchestras? 
<laughs> me too. <laughs> Come to symphonyrage.com where you can watch people punch musicians. I love it. We've got Symphony Rage. Symphony Rage. And Symphony, Symphony Rage, Rage, is she a professional hockey player? <laughs> oh, yeah. She's a professional or hockey like, player. Ooh, Olympic. Winter Olympic, Olympic hockey ooh, player. Winter Olympic mm. hockey player. And it's coming up, and she needs to focus. But she needs to bring something different to her hockey game. Her mm. opponents are really bringing it this year. I mean, they're from Iceland. They're from so. Iceland. Oh. <laughs> and everybody knows any Iceland. hockey players from Iceland are evil. <laughs> they know yes. that ice Quack. real <laughs> well. Even though Iceland's very nice. Even though nice. that they don't have a lot. But you know what? The public doesn't know that. The, yeah, the Iceland's very know nice it. and Greenland is covered in ice. No one, no, that's that's what they want you to think. Oh. Uh, that's what they want The tourism you to board gotcha. is tricky. But we know that Iceland's full of ice. Why Good. would they call it Iceland? It is God. <laughs> So, Symphony okay. Rage. So we know Symphony Rage needs to beat this Iceland mm-hmm. team. The whole team. The yeah. whole team. But she knows she has some secret information from her past that she's hidden away for a while. It mm. was it was when she was young, she played her first Iceland hockey player ever. She was in a small league. <laughs> the, the mighty uh I can't remember the last name because it's probably trademarked. But probably. uh the, the, mi- mighty the mighty young doves. Vic. The mighty doves. She was on the Mighty Doves, and she played the she played the Olympic hockey team then, and they were Iceland, and they creamed her team. Doves fly together. <laughs> and doves went, fly together. And it was so painful. And it purr. Was, uh, what, what, I mean, what, what does a bird do? Is I don't it? think doves purr. <laughs> purr. We can't say quack. Coo, I coo, 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 coo. For quack? Sure. It, Whatever, we were all on the same page. I, I, you guys I, just decided to jump. I, I'm on board. On I'm on, me. Thank I'm on you board with Coo Coo Coo, and I think it'll catch on. Okay. So, Hashtag Coo Coo Coo. But, but she refuses to go back to this time because it was so painful for her. But she, she remembers the moves, and it was the only time she ever faced down an Iceland team. So she knows she's got to go back to that time when she was younger and face those fears. But she knows having that fear is going to prevent her from doing it. It keeps. She blacks out. She doesn't remember, so she may, has to learn to may, ghost. May. Into her past. Maybe yes. she, uh, maybe a traumatic event happened, like her parents who were cheering her on the ice fell through the ice and during, Whoa. during well, the scene where she's her like, parents die. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think one parent has to live. Like, I think her mother has to live and teach her the one, how, like, teach her how to ghost, you know? Okay, but so they have dad, a tenuous relationship. Her father died in the ice. So her dad, maybe she fell through the ice and her father tried to save her and then he never came out. Guys, it's very yeah. important to follow the Spielberg rules of parenting. You only ever have one. Yeah. Never and have two only, parents that are happy together. That's a death And the sense. only thing she saw when she was under that ice was that Close. Iceland player just looking Close at Encounters her. had two parents but then their marriage just sort of went yeah it's either gotta be one parent or it completely yeah. falls apart you gotta lose a parent along the way if they have I mean Jurassic Park those parents were getting divorced it didn't even matter to the story but it had to happen yep anyways yep. so put it in the script so one parent dies at this practice yeah but no it's a game so is it because yeah. the Iceland player like does something like too cool on the ice? That, yeah, he uh, skates in like a perfect circle and oh. it cuts a hole in the ice. So, there's, so, so the Iceland player is doing tricks and stuff. Yeah. And, yeah, and the parent yeah, sees yeah. what's going on and it's like, she's going to run right into that area. I got to get out there. And the parent yeah. like jumps over the wall and it's like, no. And then yeah. mom or dad, she, which one goes she, into the she ice? She falls through. Dad goes into the ice. Dad, dad goes, goes into, into the, the ice, ice to save, save her. her. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, like she's looking up and all she can see is the Iceland player's face and just like, you know, mm-hmm. l- like l- smiling, <gasps> laughing down upon her until her dad <laughs> saves her uh yes and he sa- sounds like that no and one then- can save you now <laughs> <laughs> then she then they skate backwards away no yeah. symphony of rage i want you to die <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Iceland. Uh, and then her dad saves her uh but he but does he not dies. come out and he yeah. dies and it's very tragic and she has buried this memory along with the moves that the iceland player was making while uh, while it happened because she knows these are the devastating moves that the Iceland team is going to mm-hmm. bring to the Olympics, and she's got to be ready. She must be prepared. Mm-hmm. So she has to go to someone she can trust to bring her back to recess her back into those memories, so that she can get back to a place that she left what seems like a millennia ago. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think she has to find her. Uh, you know, she finds a, a distant cousin named Cipher Rage. <laughs> oh my. God. Who, no, not who hacks rage. into her brain? Not, uh, symphi- not symphony rage. I feel 
well, I like Cypher. The, that's Cypher Rage. Maybe uh, if we've got Symphony Rage, who's a who's a cousin or an uncle or well, an aunt? I was thinking maybe it would be like Symphony Rage. Because it, you know, after Earth is a father son story, so, so it'd be I feel mother, like daughter. mother daughter. Yeah. So, so maybe like, the mother is a psychiatrist. Orchestral rage. Or maybe she was a formal. <laughs> I love orchestral rage. Orchestral rage. Well, I'm drinking an Alaska amber, so I'm like Alaska rage. <laughs> it sounds. I don't know. Oh, because I like that sorry, Adam, Alaskan amber. You go with it's Alaskan. Really good. Rage. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I gotta say I, orchestral I think, rage. I feel like orchestral rage is the win here. Uh, to, that's really great. <laughs> um, but I feel like maybe she uh, she too was a hockey player. And time. so, like, back in her day, and so she's, like, trying to train her, and she's walking one of those, like, helicopter pants, or, like, you know... Skate uh, harder. Da- yeah, skate harder. She's, you know, that Marta If you're Paroli. going to beat the Iceland. Yes. And she's, like, really hard on her, but also, you know, no fear, and she's trying to teach her, and eventually... She tries to teach her the art of ghosting, which is going into your past and learning old secret hockey tricks. Yeah, yeah. basically. Every professional hockey player knows Tapping how to into and the millennia... Of uh, the millennial sphere in their sure. uh, in their uh, family. Of so course. I imagine this takes place in the it's future. Innate. Yeah, this is future ice hockey. You don't think Wayne Gretzky ghosted? I think he did. <laughs> uh, sure. The it's Mighty Doves, the definitely um, the future. Yeah. If you ever read his biography, it's in there. <laughs> She's a hockey. Now it's time to talk no. about ghosting. <laughs> She's. A I ho- know you waited half the way through the book, but here we go. She's a hockey copter mom. Yes, exactly. Yeah. She's stern and and but very like calm and cool under pressure. But also they're gonna have to overcome their differences in order, you know, to overcome the sphere to beat Iceland. Yes. Because they're German all of a sudden. So she she gets a her twist. To, okay, so we've got our daughter Symphony Rage. Who is being trained by orchestral rage, her mom. Totally normal. A yep. former hockey superstar. Yeah. And she realizes in order for her daughter to beat the Icelandic team, she has to recess into these memories mm-hmm. and tap into her ghosting ability. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what, what? where does she take her to? What is this arena in which she, she needs? Does it just a hockey rink? Well, obviously. Is it arena, a top of Zamboni? The arena is the old broken down shell of a hockey rink where her mother actually skated her last game. <gasps> yes. Uh, nice, nice. Or, or maybe they closed in it down Anaheim? after her father died under the ice. Ooh. Oh. The no, that's still where there. the final the game is. is. Still there. The hole is still there. <laughs> they never got the yeah. body out. I feel like Jay, the, that, that's, that's where cold. the final game is. Is the same ring, but they trained. I like that they trained where her mother like had her last game, but then you know, but then Symphony's last game is where her father died. I like, I like that. It's both of their last game stops. Yeah. So she dark takes time. her there to the dark place for her in to recess. Anaheim. Dark place, in Anaheim. To dark place. Dark place. <laughs> so they're okay. there. That's a true, true. So they're there in Anaheim, at this where the Doves play. At the at it's called Earth <laughs> Serena. Yes. <laughs> After Earth's Arena. <laughs> After Earth's Arena. <laughs> and, uh, and they're there to because recess. Because it's the future, can it float a little bit? Of like course. it hovers above Everything the hovers in the future. <laughs> okay. So we're here and she, she does like kind of like a, a hockey trick. You know, those classic hockey meditation tricks where yeah. she gets her to recess into her memories. But things have gone awry. What? I guess now this is where those stuffed animals come into play. Oh, yes. Because I didn't forget about those. Naturally. Because we're going to have some CGI stuffed animal monsters. And I think all of them have Iceland, like, very stereotypical Icelandic voices. So they're polar bears. (gasps) They're all polar bears. And maybe, like, a giraffe or two or something in there. Right? Penguins? They could be all polar bears, I guess. And penguins. Polar bears and penguins. They're all ice animals. Yeah. Which is just two... (laughs) No, just they're, they're seals. Uh, seals. They're just seals. Just seals yeah. and whales. Okay, some whales in there. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. she's she's got her trusty uh, hockey stick. Uh, pandas. Yes. Is Wait, is it her father's there. hockey stick? It's her father's hockey stick, but it was a hockey stick. She wasn't, when she was young, when she was training with her father, her, both her parents were hockey superstars. <laughs> um, and when the she was like... family wa- going yeah. back from millennia. Oh, yes. That's right. And when she was watching like them train, like she always imagined having a perfect hockey stick. And and she she imagined the perfect hockey stick, and she what did she call her imaginary hockey stick? The imaginary hockey stick, which will be her weapon. The lightsaber. Just the lightsaber. Yep, Look now, I lightsaber. don't know about the legal stuff. We'll have to check with our legal department. I don't know if we're going to be able to get away with using lightsaber as a hockey oh, stick. Oh, that's right. You have to call them laser swords, don't you? Yeah, we'll have to call it a laser sword. Dang laser it. sword. Light stick. Guys, anything oh, closer to hockey that? stick. Oh, um, <laughs> what? <laughs> she calls her hockey stick Immortan Joe. <laughs> what? 
I don't know why Mad Max just I was like okay well why don't we give it a ridiculous name honey what's your hockey stick called is (laughs) it called like Mr. Sunshine or uh, Ice Stick Xanadu it's called a Morton Joe I like Xanadu that's a great name for that a hockey stick. That is a Xanadu. great Xanadu name. Xanadu hockey stick? Okay. Yes. So she has Xanadu. her imaginary hockey stick, Xanadu. So when she goes back into her past, she's encountering all these dangerous stuffed animal creatures, but she has her, her magical Xanadu oh, hockey man. stick with That's her. That's her like weapon, and she's going yeah. like, to kill right. all these weapons. Oh, yeah. Remember, we're going to have to make Sick. toys out of these. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Xanadu will be very... It'll talk. It'll have a musical Light number. up. Oh, who's the voice? Oh, we're going to cast later. But we should definitely pick out a really great voice. Maybe Jim Carrey for the hockey stick. Ooh, Jim Carrey for Xanadu would be mm-hmm. really good. What if we go the opposite route and go Brian Posehn for <laughs> the hockey stick? That, could, that actually would be hilarious. That also would be really good. I was thinking Maya Rudolph because she would sing. Every <gasps> once in a while. Oh, my God. That's perfect. Oh, yeah. Good. I think Maya Rudolph is actually the way to go. Uh, yeah, that amazing. Be, yeah. Damn, great cast choices off the top. Yeah. Okay, so how was she beating her past to find this memory of I, of this Icelandic trick? I feel that she needs to get some sort of spirit guide when she goes inside of her head, some sort of there imaginary friend there she had while she was growing up. And it was Izzy, the Atlanta 96 the- <laughs> Olympic, <laughs> Olympic mascot. mascot. The who? <laughs> Izzy, the 1996 <laughs> Summer Olympic mascot. You know what? I haven't checked. <laughs> But I think it's still relevant uh, enough for it to work. <laughs> Izzy, uh, the we, wait, I don't think we, can do no, wait, we have to pick something else because we're kidding. not going to be able to get the rights to That's that. That's true. That's true. You guys don't think the hockey stick was going to be the imaginary friend? <laughs> you know when uh, I was like uh, an imaginary friend. Well, her maybe, hockey stick. The hockey stick will have to like have a little bit of a different form. It'll have to be way more anthropomorphized. Oh, like the face of, her of the head. hockey stick will have like a mouth, and it'll be my Rudolph. Okay, perfect. But that means it's going to die if we're going to bing bong no, that hockey gonna stick. No, we're not going to bing bong the hockey bing bong stick. that hockey stick. No one bing bongs Maya Rudolph. Yeah. <laughs> Only unless <laughs> Maya Rudolph wants to be bing bong. Yeah, and if she wants to get bing bong, then all power to her. Yeah. All bing bong Consent is sexy. Day. Otherwise, I'm telling you right now, I'm not bing bonging Maya Rudolph. I can tell you that. Yeah. Why? Do you got something against Maya Rudolph? I got nothing against Maya Rudolph, all right? Unless she wants us to. I would bing bong her all day, but that's not what I'm here to do here today, Todd. You heard it first. He's got something against Maya Rudolph. I didn't say that. Let the record show that I would bing bong my Studio Rudolph. executive J does not want to bing bong Whoa, my don't write, that don't write that down. Jesse, read back the notes. Well, he said he would want not want to bing God bong my Rudolph. Jesse, Rudolph. I swear to God, if you don't burn those papers right now. Jesse still works here. Be, <laughs> Mr. Jones, it is blowing up on Twitter already that you are Jeez. not binging my Jesus, that was so fast. It's I swear like, to God. Yeah, when it's I find hashtag out which bing bong my Rudolph. So. Oh, hashtagging. Uh, right. All right, listen, everybody. Oh, Squirtle. I'll have to deal with this. <laughs> Fucking put the Pokemon Go sorry, away. Sorry. All right. Now, we're not gonna we're not gonna bing bong my Rudolph, but my Rudolph is gonna be there for her adventure to reclaim her dark history to beat the Iceland Olympic hockey team. Yeah. Now, what's this final battle gotta be? It's gotta be her and Mile Rudolph. You've gotta square off against against this evil memory of this child that tormented her when she was on the hockey team. What? If she has to go up against an Icelandic team of stuffed evil toys. Oh, yes, because Ooh. it's so far in the future that they don't need actual humans to play. They I think he get... meant in her mind. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> think still in her literally brain. she once she We're figures it out. So in the future, the Iceland team are just polar bears and penguins so and seals from, and whales? From the memory stuffed that she had. Things. From the memory that she had of this particular Icelandic player, when they went back to Iceland in the years since this traumatic memory has happened, they've all turned into mutated animals because yes. of Chernobyl esque type of nuclear events it's that, that go far on in, in the that future. area. It, the year is 2025. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know I have this button on the side of the table when I feel like we've gone too far, and I feel like I'm real close to pressing that button. But it's our job to get you real close to pushing that button. It could be a great toy line. So, to be clear, <laughs> when she was young. <laughs> She was facing off against regular humans, human, yeah. human humans, people human playing humans. hockey. Thousand years right. in the past, and then and then and then in the future, and then like what? Post-apocalypse. Ten years later, father's death. Ten years later, now they're so all... now there's a post-apocalypse in this in this future uh-huh. as well. Of course. Uh-huh. If, okay. Yeah. So why do you think it's called the After Earth Arena, Jay? 
hockey stick. Why do you think it's called the After Earth mind. Arena? No, and in real life. Oh, what? No. Yes, no, 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 no. Okay, I'm pushing the button no. right now. We've gone way too far. Jesse, no. way too down far. Down the I'm pushing it very, very hard. Nix that button, Jesse. No, no, this no. Is a coup. Swear to God, Jesse, way too far. Did you put batteries in the button? It's not working. Nope, he did not put batteries. It's a it metaphorical count. button. It doesn't matter. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, she marked that down. It's I would just like to point out that he's poo-pooing the ideas of the only woman in the room, so... Whoa! Uh, Whoa! Has- hashtag bing bong Maya Rudolph. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, <laughs> trying to have some semblance of sanity here. All right, fine. Look, sanity? You- it's the studio system. <laughs> You know, I know I get I know I gave you that inspirational poster, Todd, but you don't have to bring it up every single time. <laughs> Sorry. I bang my head against it, even though it doesn't really say that you should do that. It's the only way we learn sometimes. <laughs> so I guess <laughs> So she uh is in her mind. Yeah. And she defeats these uh imaginary yeah. stuffed animal CGI with, monsters. With her talking... With her talking Maya Rudolph Maya hockey Rudolph stick. hockey stick that mm-hmm. also sings sometimes. Wait, yes. do we have a name for the hockey stick? Xanadu. 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 That's right, thank you. So Xanadu. her and Xanadu, Xanadu the beat, magical singing hockey stick. beat these stuffed animal creatures right. for her to come out of her and state. And I think her mom wakes her up and is like, wake up, um, there's a bunch of mutated animals that are here to battle you in hockey. You know what? And I think that's I the asked, end. I asked for a twist. And that's the twist. <laughs> she wakes on, up on, on the same level of Did Midnight Shyamalan say, twist level. Wait, so she I wakes up from her dream. Twist. She wakes up from her dream to f- from of fighting. No, no, no. To find out it's real. It's okay, now this is real. now this is how it works though. The Iceland team they didn't expect this. They were like, now the Icelandic team brings some trickery each year. Last year, they were throwing snow cones. They were doing some tricky stuff. This year, they're mutated this animals. This year, they have trained mutated animals. No, no, mutated stuffed animals. Mutated stuffed animals. And then they bring out the rule book. There's like, it they, doesn't say They air it in. They're like, you can't. Yeah. It doesn't say anywhere you can't do this. Yeah. Which is a rule in sports, apparently. Yes. Iceland, the island of Dr. Moreau. But all the other yes. team, all the other team is freaking out. They're losing their minds because who would ever expect this to happen? Why would it ever happen? Who knows? Every Simpler. team is getting knocked out one by one, just game after game, losing montage. Nobody but you know who just spent hours ghosting, fighting monstrous stuffed animals who symphony also symphony rage bro, symphony. symphony rage and, and she xanadu goes nuts with xanadu and her mother Orcus. and and well you know what and her mother the, the goalie the goalie is like i can't deal with this shit i'm not going to fight a giant polar bear penguin monster creature and orchestral rage is like you know what i haven't grabbed the glove in a long time do you, Mom, just, do you used just to like, be a goalie? Do you just pan over? Right. It was her hockey stick the whole time. I think, though, she's like, but you're going to need this. And then she pulls out Xanadu, the magical singing hockey stick that's actually real in real life. And it was her dad's stick or something. Yes. Yay. It's yeah, like metaphorical. It's real yeah, a real life metaphorical, magical singing hockey stick. It's voiced all by real. Maya so in the third act of this movie, <laughs> we just dump ass it all <laughs> over it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For toys. Okay. So for toys. So in the final act. This is 3D, right? Si- yeah. Yes. Oh, t- uh, okay. I mean, we have to <laughs> now. To make sure. Symphony Rage. And Tim Burton will direct. <laughs> Wow, that was perfect. <laughs> Symphony Rage. Yeah. With a magical, now real, magical hockey stick. Now everyone's going to see it. Yep. Teams up with her mom, Orchestral Rage. As yeah. goalie. And defeats the Icelandic mutant stuffed animal hockey team. Yep. To win the gold medal for America. Yeah, but I'm sure in the future it's probably uranium. Hockey teams in the future play for uranium? <laughs> totally, yeah, uranium bro. uranium medals. I love that in the future, the Olympics decide which country gets uranium to make <laughs> weapons. Right. No, I was thinking uranium medals. Like, they oh. wear it oh, even better. on their necks. <laughs> what? Uh. How do you think they became mutants? There's no, like If there's a term, like, if you could say something so metal, but if you could say that for post-apocalypse, there's nothing more post-apocalypse than uranium medals. <laughs> yeah. So shiny, so chrome. Yes. That's ridiculous. All right. Morton Joe? No. Guys, that's our movie. <laughs> and it's called... What is it called? Inside Ho- on Ice. Inside Hockey. But that sounds like a ESPN documentary, so that's not good. <laughs> uh, Hawkside After out. Hockey. <laughs> After <laughs> Hockey. Because <laughs> it's in the future. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> hashtag bing bong my riddle. Oh. <laughs> 
Wait, does the movie end with a big Maya Rudolph musical number? Yes. Oh, absolutely. I mean, sure, sure, sure. While the credits are going, the credits are going to go over it as they're all dancing on the ice. Um, It's called Under the Ice. Um, Iceman. Inside After Arena. It's called, no, it's called Brain Freeze. I mean, yeah, I guess it's going to be called Brain Freeze. <laughs> or just Iceland. I just. I think Brain Freeze brain is pretty freeze good. Is brain mind. Freeze. <laughs> I can see it. I get it. I just saw the poster. And guys, Icelandic the Google ice cream loop. promos we're going to be able to run oh with this. Oh my God, Baskin mm. Robbins is going to have a It's going to be day. amazing. So, mm. casting now. Yes. Oh. Okay. So, who's going to be our lead? We got to nail that down first. Who's going to be playing Symphony Rage? Mm. I feel like we need a young yep. person, uh-huh. someone like. Um, Oh, like Ellen. Zendaya, like somebody up and coming mm. like that. I'm Maybe like that. Ellen Page. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm picturing like an Ellen Page-ish. She's, She's a little old pale. for that. Well, no, 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 no. We need two because we need a young Symphony Rage. We need an older Symphony Rage. But yeah, like young Symphony Rage is going to be real young though. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like you yeah. get an unknown for it. True, 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 true. That's, That's a true, true, true. Wait, there's got to be a younger <laughs> Smith out there, right? What's a younger J? <laughs> there is. There is another Smith. Oh my God! There is Willow Smith. Yeah, Willow Smith. Willow Smith. Move your hair back. Oh, it's gotta be. It's gonna be wow, Willow. Wow, that is it's Willow. brilliant. Shit. Willow so that Smith. means we get to kill Will Smith that within the first five minutes of this Jada movie. Jada Pinkett. Jada Pinkett. Jada Pinkett. Jada Pinkett. Jada Pinkett. Jada Pinkett. Holy shit! It's perfect. We did it, everybody. And we, oh, wow. and we kill Good job, Will Smith. Everyone. And we kill Will Smith. We get to kill Will back. Smith in like the first five minutes in of this the movie. movie, everyone. In but we don't tell anyone that happens. Yeah, he's in all the posters. All the posters. All the posters. Will Smith in Brain Freeze. Wow. So Willa, so Willow Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith. <laughs> what did you say? Icelandic well, it's, Boogaloo. I like that title a lot better. <laughs> it's, it's, no, it's, it's just the subtitle. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the subtitle. It's the subtitle. <laughs> wow. Wow. That Brain is Freeze, Icelandic High five. Boogaloo. That's perfect. Can there be a hit single from it called Can, I Whip My Stick Back and Forth? Yes. Oh, I love it. Uh, Following in like, the Wild Wild West footsteps. Can, I, I love gonna, it. I can't, Jim I, West. I, I want to be... <laughs> It's going to become a controversial song later. And, right? half, mm-hmm. and halfway through the song, Maya Rudolph's going to cut in in the music video and start oh, dancing man. as well. Yeah. yeah. It's, so exactly what so she's do a do. Beyonce impression. This is, guys. This is a movie. Did brain you, freeze you, is a real the thing. The Icelandic uh, kid that then gets turned into a mutant. Uh, who plays that role? Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> wow. You had that thought out. I was just going to huh? say Bjork. I did not. I literally was just like, that's the one. I was just going to say Bjork. Bjork is great, too. Bjork is great. But I, like I think, I think Bjork is the coach of the Iceland hockey great. team. Oh, Beautiful. my God. That's actually yes. a great role that for him. Yeah. She's the coach of the Iceland hockey team. And, Holy shit. and Macaulay Culkin is definitely the evil kid. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm I mean, we'll use we'll use some of that CGI technology to make him look like yeah. a kid again. It'll yeah, look yeah. creepy and weird, and it'll be perfect. Perfect. You just gotta. So, guys, that's our movie. Mm. Brain freeze. Beautiful. So now, starting to the Smiths. The, relax the and Smiths. take our mind off of Pokemon Go. We'll play our game. Merry fuck kill. Merry fuck. Merry fuck kill. Merry fuck. Merry fuck kill. Merry fuck. Merry fuck kill. All right, this is our game. Merry fuck kill. This is where Todd will name three movies that are similar in some way. We will have to decide which movie we would marry, which movie we would fuck, and which movie we'd kill. Todd, what are our three movies? And the way Todd. that they are all Todd. similar is. <gasps> Beloved childhood films that oh. have a creepy sequence in them that makes it not so childhood like. Oh. oh. The three films are Give it to me. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Oh. Fuck those Who Oompa-Loompas. Framed Roger Rabbit. Oh. There's nobody sexy in that movie. Yes. And The Labyrinth. Oh, wow. Also, nobody oh. sexy in that movie. I love It's going to be very difficult. The, yeah. the Labyrinth? Oh, the one with. Yes. Sorry. With the creepy magic. one? Dance, magic, dance, dance magic, magic, dance, magic. Creepy, creepy, dance, creepy, 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 creepy. Hello. You well, Tom, no, you I remind me of the babe. What babe? <laughs> The babe with the power. What power? The power of voodoo. Who do? You do. What? Remind me of the babe. Love that movie. Guys, this is, this is great. Okay, does anyone have their picks first? So we've got, okay. We've oh, got. Those are really hard. Yeah. I love all three of them. We've those. got Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Uh huh. We have The Labyrinth. Uh huh. And we also have Willy Wonka. Uh huh. Okay. 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 All right, Truman, what are your picks? Oh, man. Well. <sighs> Whoa. <laughs> he scared me, dude. Truman, I am bleeding. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with I'm going to murder face 
Willy Wonka. Okay. Whoa. Why murder Willy Wonka? Well, someone's um, got to go. <laughs> someone's got to go. <laughs> why, why old Willy? Well, <laughs> Willy Wonka had a super... Like, when we watched it as a kid, we're like, oh my god, this movie's great, and et cetera, and so forth. But then, like, when you watch it when you're older, you're like, God, he is sadistic. And he's, <laughs> he like, is. murdering kids off left and right. And, and then he's like... Eh. None of them die, right? Don't um, even... None of them die. Uh, questionable. <laughs> oh, he's like, oh, yeah, they're fine. Oh, that's but right. I guess we never... Like, like in the again? newer version, we see them leave. Yeah. Because yes. I'm sure somebody at the studio was like, we kind of have to show them alive. In the, but yeah, yeah, definitely in the old in ones. The Gene Wilder like, version. He could totally be lying about that. We, they Wouldn't say they, that, like, Augustus Gloop will be, like, in the system for a while, you know? Like, he'll be squeezed mm. out. Yeah. And there's, like... They're talking oh, no, that's about, the like, girl the, that turns into the blueberry. Fi- the, the firing points, like, oh, yeah, it gets up to, like, one million degrees in there. Right. She'll be fine. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Wow. All those kids are totally dead. And they they roll off a Ruka, not Veruca Salt, but the blue, the big blueberry one to be, sque- to yeah, be squeezed. Salt. Was that Veruca? Oh, no, you were right. It was the other one that... Uh, violet. You're turning yes, violet, Violet. violet. Uh, the they, blueberry. Yeah, they roll her away to be squeezed. I'm just like, that's not how you save a person. Yeah, like that's that. not how you... Uh, how do you save a person well, who's maybe turning that into a is giant blueberry? Well, you can't be like, I have too much blood. Oh, we'll just compress <laughs> that out of you. That's how In a way, when work. something... Uh, you lance it. Yeah, like lance when them. when something becomes like swollen or whatever, you let some of the liquid out. So in a way, that is what they were doing to her. But do you, Sometimes, do you, or you freeze you let, it off. You let it out, like you yeah. poke it out. No, you don't squeeze. Well, maybe, well, maybe you meant. squeeze it so that it sort of just... Pops. I think the Oompas know what he means. Yeah, he I think squeeze. it's like a thing. Also, the, he employs a slave army of Oompa Loompa. Anyways. So you're killing Willy Wonka. I'm killing Willy Wonka. Now, Walker. who are you, um, you know? I'm going to, I'm going to marry. Ooh. No, I'm going to fuck <laughs> who killed Roger Rabbit. Wow, why? Um, I can't think of a reason why. I have a big thing for rabbits, so. There you go. Enough for me. Jessica Rabbit. Oh yes, I thought you meant Roger. Also, I love that they brought Disney and like um, that's Looney true Tunes together. It's great. Did you know that the uh, that uh, Bugs Bunny and Mickey Mouse have the exact same screen time in that movie? I had no idea. But that that makes like, sense. I'm sure, they have to. That was like that a was contractual a thing. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. And to, wow. to, to fulfill that, they just put that that one scene where they're falling through the air with the uh, the spare tire. Yeah, like, give him the spare. And that's a spare tire. Um, in any case, I'd have sex with uh, Roger Rabbit. No, the movie, not the. the <laughs> and uh, Freudian slip. I would marry Labyrinth. I have such a hardcore. I love that movie Aww. so much. Like, is it Bluto? Ludo? Ludo. 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 Oh, he's Ludo amazing. friend. Uh, Ludo. I'd be your friend, um, Bluto. Labyrinth is just such a great movie and such great magical mm-hmm. numbers. And uh, Jennifer Connelly. It's all Jim Henson muppet- yeah. er, puppetry. Frank Oz. Yeah, which I, I like. I wish we could still do that kind of stuff today. You can. Uh, like, I, I wish that we would still do that. Stuff. Exactly. Says the puppet yeah. guy. Like, I you can I, very easily. I, yeah, I wish that we would like more often. I, J.J. Abrams did it with Star Wars. Yeah, that's true. It was yes, amazing puppetry exactly. in that yeah. movie. Yeah. Todd, do you have your pick? Yeah, I'm going to kill the labyrinth. You what a mother- surprise! <laughs> <laughs> you. Do you hate happiness? happiness? You know, that's uh, usually what I say. <laughs> I the 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 saddest part about killing the labyrinth is going to be that you can only do it once. Snuffing out David <gasps> Bowie because David Bowie is God to me. However, that movie freaks me out. And it has continued to freak me out. And I've tr- I didn't like it the first time I saw it. And then every single time afterwards, I just like haven't. Th- it has all the ingredients of everything I should love in this world. But when I watch it, it makes me uncomfortable. And that's that's it. When's the last yeah, time you enough? watched the, that movie? Dude, out don't of curiosity. even. Out of, out of curiosity. When did Bowie die? 1999. What? This, when did he die? This year, bro. This, this year. year? Yes, year, bro. like a few months ago. You started with 19, and I was like, you're way oh, off, buddy. God. By at least 17 years. So, uh, so you, you would kill? I saw it in February. Okay. I've seen it multiple it's okay. times. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. He cannot like the labyrinth. I'm now, Todd, no, you would, you're not. I don't. I'm gonna you would your tires. kill the labyrinth. <laughs> I'm now gonna, I'm gonna kill the labyrinth. Sadly, I'm gonna I'm gonna snuff it in its sleep and watch it go peacefully, but not so peacefully because it realizes halfway through that I'm trying to kill it. You're a her- <laughs> terrible human being. Uh, however, I'll be happy to then choose between muck, uh, mucking, <laughs> mucking and ferrying, uh, Willy Wonka or uh, now which one? Um, that's the hard part. I think I'm gonna have to have sex with. Uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit just because 
bouncing off the walls, Toontown, all that. Just, I mean, that's going to be some wild, crazy, really fun stuff. That would mean that I'd marry Willy Wonka because it's just one of the most charming uh, movies, childhood movies. You know, it's really great. And I dig the, I dig Willy Wonka's weird shit that he's like psychological shit that he's putting these kids. They don't deserve a bunch of brats. Yep. They're a bunch of fucking brats. So I mean, like they totally deserve it. Every single time I'm just like, yeah, get rid of that guy. Get rid of that I'm kid. He's done. So you will like, you will be owner of chocolate factory. Oh yeah. I yeah. am owner of chocolate factory. <laughs> Awesome. And I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I mean, that's just a marriage that I'd love to, yeah, absolutely. Grandpa, and all, all of them in the same oh, bed, Grandpa everybody, Joe. everybody's sleeping <laughs> in the same bed. Love everybody it. in the same bed? Let's <laughs> we're, do this. We're a very oh, close no, family. We're very close family. beds. Come on. You have all the money. <laughs> no, no. They're you gotta, just, you gotta have those They're comfortable beds. together in that bed. They're they're like where they came from, right? Yeah. Now, Hillary. Yeah. Do you have your picks? I got it. Ooh, throw them out there. So, I will kill Who Framed Roger Rabbit. <gasps> no. Which why? Because cartoons in live action freak me out. Who Framed Roger Rabbit and Cool World yeah, just well, like... Cool World's really bad. But it just, it freaks <laughs> me out. And also movie. just like Jessica Rabbit and just how hypersexualized she is. Oh, just, yeah. I, I have, it's hard for me to watch. It's not her fault she's just drawn that way. Uh... Okay, shut up. Um, so, bye, man. Bye, man. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, dot, dot, dot. You're missing a point. Not, and not that I don't like it because I think it has like a really fantastic message and it's a really cool way to talk about like LA history. But I still have a hard time like kind of getting over that a little bit. Um, so sorry. A freeway. Actually, not sorry. <laughs> no one's but, gonna um, on that. And then I would marry. Charlie and Char- uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory because free candy for life. Oh, um, something I didn't think of, but yeah, yeah. free candy for life. <laughs> uh. And um, and the then, best. So I would I would fuck uh, Labyrinth because uh-huh. I so no I make it necessary. yeah really I don't need to explain <laughs> it but I go to every year at least one of like the four or five outdoor screening of the labyrinth people in LA, whether it's like eat, see here or street food cinema or Cinespia will do. One of them will do a screening of labyrinth and it is a ritual for me every summer to go to one of these outdoor screenings of labyrinth. And so I just went with my boyfriend, a couple of his friends like last month and we all went and it was amazing. And it's just, I don't know why I just started it as like a tradition, but I saw it one year uh, at Cinespia at the Hollywood Forever. Um, yeah, it was like a Halloween screening and I was like, I'm doing this every year. And honestly, I feel like it's the best way to see the movie. That's amazing. Hoggle? Uh, wow. Yeah. Hoggle and, doesn't And then friends. I love that this little like weird Easter egg that's not meant to be an Easter egg, but um, Jennifer Connelly calls Hoggle Hogwart twice in the movie. Oh, huh. weird. Yeah, and it because they can never remember his name, and that's the running joke. And like the first time I heard Hogwart, I was like, "That's kind of perfect." Do you think? She, like, do you think that's where uh, Old J.K. got it from? I don't know. Who knows? I uh, who knows? Who came first, you Hogwarts I mean? or Hogwart? You know what I mean? I don't know. Internet, let us know. But yeah, I I love Labyrinth, and it's really weird, and I don't know why I love it so much because it's so strange. But it's and I think it's the music, honestly. It's so good. It's great. I think it's, it's the music, it's so and good. I think just some of the the jokes and the the sequences, like the dream sequence, it it's just a gorgeous film. And who wouldn't ha- want to have sex in that bog of eternal stench? Yeah, mm. right. Um, so hot. Todd yeah, no. just raised his hand. But yeah, so those are great picks. Now mine, I would actually kill, I would kill Willy Wonka. I would kill Willy mm-hmm. Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. One of, one of them's gotta go. They've gotta go. It's tough. I do really enjoy that movie. Um, I just think I, I just think I just eat too much damn candy. Just too mm-hmm. much candy all the time. And I'd probably like fizzy lifting drinks and I'd get killed in a fan or something. It's just like a, it's a death trap factory. Um, but... I'd have to kill it, but I would, I would fuck Labyrinth because that movie is pretty sexy. Those... Very weird, but oh, so sexy. the right kind of weird. Very sexy. I want to know what's going on with those like uh, those weird guys whose heads bounce off and fire do dance. strange stuff. For the fire dance. I want to know what's going on with that fire dance. The wild game. You could have you know the room with all the stairs, the Escher painting style. Like you could do it on those crazy ass stairs. Gravity doesn't matter. Not in the labyrinth. <laughs> now. I would marry Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And it's because I love noirs and I love cartoons. 
And the fact that I could own a pistol that just fires living bullets <laughs> is very entertaining to me. <laughs> and like just down the street is like Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny. Like why wouldn't I live in a town like that? Truth. And you like Preach. you can defeat weasels with like laughter battles is like hilarious and cartoonish. There's like a small part of me that just thinks that's just so like wonderful and childlike. And sure, there's not like perfect things with that world, but what is perfect? Wow. Yeah. It's got introspective, huh? So introspective. Is it forced? Probably. So <laughs> <laughs> those are my picks and three movies for Mary Fuck Kill. So guys, thanks for being here. Thanks, guys. Mary fucking and killing childlike films. <laughs> Wholesome you, fun. Thanks for having us. The movies. Do you think that the Willy Wonka like factory was like the the beginning of the Saw franchise? <laughs> like, <laughs> that would be oh awesome. <laughs> <laughs> thanks everybody. Bye. Yay! Butts. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for our final episode. I hope you learned a lot about Iceland and hockey. Anyways, thank you, listeners, for sticking with us for all 22 episodes and for the people that came over from Blockbuster Punch-Up. Todd and I have had an amazing time working on this show. And a huge, huge thanks to all of our special guests who made this show what it was. A big thanks to our guests specifically from this episode. If you want to hear more from Truman Alfaro, you can follow him on Twitter at Truman Alfaro. That's T-R-U-M-A-N-A-L-F-A-R-O. And if you want to follow up with Hillary Levi, you can follow her on Twitter at Hillary Levi. That's H-I-L-L-A-R-Y-L-E-V-I. And of course, huge thanks to all of our other special guests. Please go back, listen to those episodes, check them out on Twitter, Instagram, their websites, everything. We've had a wonderful time doing this show. It's been a lot of fun smashing these weird movies together and coming up with these crazy concepts, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you're interested or want to check out some of the other podcasts on PartialArc.com, such as Roll to Seas, Friday Night Quests, or Because Comics, just go to PartialArc.com. That's Arc with a C. Thanks for listening, and bye from all of us here at Blockbuster Smash Up. Let's go home. Oh, my God.